In this video, we are going to practice solving a physics problem by taking a definitional approach, in contrast to memorizing formulas and a method to solve a problem. This will make a very boring and painful subject and turn it into an intuitive approach to solving problems. Let's get started. Okay, let's get started by looking at our problem. A car moves at a constant speed for 110 meters in 5 seconds. It brakes and stops in 4 seconds. What is the car's acceleration? Express your answer in G's, where 1G is over 9.8 meters per second, which is really just the speed of gravity. So what is it asking us for? Well, it's asking to solve for acceleration. Now, start by writing the definition of acceleration, and that is the change in velocity over the time it takes for that change to happen. You'll see it on your formula sheet often as delta V over delta T. And as you know from chemistry or in the other math class that delta is the change in, which is final minus initial. So the final velocity minus the initial velocity over the time it takes for that change to happen. Now I'll be careful here because it gives you two times. It gives you a five seconds and a four seconds. And you might be tempted to separate these from one another. But, and that can get you know, pretty scary. So we're going to just stick to our definition here so that we have the intuition on what to do. So what's actually changing here? Well, the change in velocity is going from 110 meters to five sec in five seconds, and it stops in four seconds. The actual change happens over four seconds because this, as it says, is a constant speed. So the change happens in four seconds, and the time it takes for that change to happen is your denominator, so we're going to put four underneath here. Now, we don't know the initial velocity, just says a car moves at a constant speed of 1, 10, and 5 seconds. But we do know the final velocity is it breaks and stops in 4 seconds. So we're going to write that out here as the change in velocity. So our final is going to be 0, and we're going to solve for v1, because we have our time it takes for that change to happen. So let's start off by drawing a graph, which is right here. So here we have its constant speed, which was the initial velocity. And in the initial velocity, it moved 110 meters in 5 seconds. So how do we solve for velocity? Well, let's look at the definition. Velocity is the distance an object move over the time it takes to move that distance. Pretty similar to acceleration. So it moved 110 meters and it moved those meters in 5 seconds. So at t equals 0, it's here at the initial velocity. At t equals 5 seconds, it's here at the final velocity, being not moving. Moved 110 meters over 5 seconds, which is the distance over the time it took to move that distance, and we end up with 22 meters per second. So we're going to plug that into our equation, which is the line we had initially up here. So we'll plug that in for the final. And since the final velocity was 0 minus the initial velocity, we can ignore the 0 and just plug this right here into our fabulous calculators. We end up with negative 5.5, and our units were meters per second over second. So when you have a second over second, as you know from algebra, you just square that. So we have negative 5.5 meters per second. And now, let's check our units, which is, should be the first thing you do, but we already had it in meters and seconds, which are your standard units for any physics problem. But in this problem, it's asking us to express our answers in g's. And it gives you the conversion factor of 1g over 9.8 meters per second. So we just set it up and multiply it out. So 5.5 times 1 is going to be 5.5. Now this whole thing's over 1, so that'll be over 9.8. Plug you can plug this into your calculator, or if you're already familiar, you can just jump right to here if you know conversion factors really well. And that gives you an end answer of negative 5.6 g's. Uh, I hope this tutorial was helpful for you in giving the intuition on how to use the definitions of these concepts so that you don't have to sit and memorize formula after formula. The definitions are a little more intuitive and easy to work with. So I hope this was helpful for you. Please rate, comment, subscribe.